The Jewish revolt against Rome changed Jewish history in an unbelievable way. While the Second Temple stood in Jerusalem, the Jews lived under mostly foreign rule. At first, when the Jews returned to Judea from the Babylonian captivity to build the Second Temple, they peacefully submitted to Persian rule. Then, with the sudden rise of Alexander the Great, the entire region came under Greek subjugation, including the Jewish homeland in 332 BCE. As before, the Jews bore their foreign yoke in silence. But the calm was shattered when Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a Syrian Greek tyrant, declared war on the Jewish religion. There's no evidence for any attempt of Jews to revolt against the foreign rulers until you get to the point of the Maccabean revolt when persecution of Jews begins. The Maccabean revolt brought full independence to the Jewish people for the first time since the start of the Second Temple era. Eight Maccabean monarchs sustained this independence until the passing of Queen Shlomzion, or Salome Alexandra, in 67 BCE. Then, civil war erupted between the supporters of the queen's two sons, Hyrcanos and Aristobulus, both of whom claimed the throne. In 63 BCE, the sparring heirs to the Maccabean crown made the disastrous mistake of approaching the legendary Roman general Pompey for arbitration, thereby inviting foreign interference into the governance of the Jewish homeland. By that time, the Romans really wanted to control Eretz Yisrael. First of all, for economic reasons, they were trying to create a bread basket for ancient Rome because they had insufficient food. Second of all, and this is really important here. They needed a kind of fortress, a boundary line, against the Parthians, who by that time had moved from what we today call Iran into areas of Babylonia, Iraq of today. Pompey chose Perconus as the ninth Maccabean king. But when his brother Aristobulus rejected Pompey's decision, the Roman general invaded the land of Israel and seized control of the kingdom slaughtering thousands of Jews in the process. The upshot of what happened was that this is where the country came under Roman rule. Thus began decades of crippling taxation and oppression that impoverished the nation. Most Jews were willing to settle for Roman rule as long as the Romans left them alone beyond taxation. But some of these people were not. And so you could even say that the sparks of the eventual Jewish revolt against Rome began to burn from the second the Romans arrived. In 54 BCE, the Roman proconsul Crassus looted all of the gold in the Holy Temple's treasury to fund his expedition against the Parthians. In 46 BCE, Herod, then governor of the Galilee, massacred hundreds of Jews to enforce excessive taxation on behalf of Rome. Two years later, the Roman proconsul Cassius sold the Jews of four towns as slaves as a penalty for failing to pay the steep taxes Cassius had imposed on the residents of Judea to fund his war against Mark Antony. The national tragedy thickened in 42 BCE when the Roman ruler Mark Antony installed Herod as client king. Herod impoverished the populace through massive taxation to fund the construction of lavish palaces, fortresses, Greek temples, and new cities. Just before his death in 4 BCE, he installed an image of an eagle, the symbol of Roman rule, on the Holy Temple, and then massacred the Jewish sages and their students who dared to remove it. Shortly after his death, Herod's son Archelaus succeeded him and promptly massacred over 3,000 Jews. In desperation, the Jews turned to Rome pleading that their homeland be annexed to the Roman province of Syria, so that instead of tyrannical puppet kings, Syrian proconsuls could govern them as fairly as they govern Syria itself. Rome acceded to this request in 6 CE, and the terror of the client kings came to an end. The net result of this is that the Romans put in a system of procurators. These procurators were kind of local governors under the larger province of Syria, now, some of these people were great people, like Marcus Tullius Cicero, the great orator and lawyer from Rome. But some of them were horrible, 
A number of procurators sought to amass personal wealth via excessive taxation and other corrupt means. This angered the population of Judea. The obligation of a Roman governor was to deliver a predetermined amount of tax money to Rome. Furthermore, these Roman governors were allowed to keep as much of the money that they could collect beyond that amount. The procurators were also frequently indifferent to Jewish religious sensibilities. In 30 CE, procurator Pontius Pilate ordered his soldiers to carry their standards with images of the Roman emperor through Jerusalem. Now the problem with the Roman standards was that they were worshiped by the Romans, so they were idolatrous images. This was a dire offense to Jewish sensibilities, especially in their sacred capital. Between 37 and 41 CE, the Emperor Caligula demanded that a statue of himself be erected in the Holy Temple. The Jews were prepared to go to any lengths to stop this offense. And knowing this, Publius Petronius, the Syrian proconsul, did his best to persuade Caligula to rescind his decree. But Caligula was adamant. Gaius Caligula sent him a letter that said that if he didn't do it, he should commit suicide because of the fact that he would be executed for it. Luckily for Petronius, who decided to refuse these terrible orders, he got a message that Caligula was dead before the day in which he was going to have to stand up to him, the deadline date. So the situation passed. But the Jews were ready to lay down their lives for this to stop these idols from being brought into the city. The weight of oppression and impoverishment led to the formation of Jewish brigands who targeted Roman villages and wealthy Jews. These winds of lawlessness intensified around the year 48 CE and endured for the next two decades. The pot finally came to a boil in 66 CE under the thumb of the Roman procurator to Judea, Gessius Florus. Decades earlier, around 20 BCE, King Herod had built the Mediterranean port city of Caesarea, but its Jewish and Gentile populations each claimed that Caesarea was made for them, and they fought for control of the city. In 66 CE, Nero ruled in favor of the city's Gentiles, who then launched acts of provocation against their Jewish neighbors. Jesius Florus, the Roman procurator, accepted the Jews' gifts of silver in return for a promise to terminate the acts of provocation, but he failed to act. News of the Jewish loss of Caesarea and Florus's corruption sparked widespread indignation. But the gifts that Florus received from the Jews of Caesarea didn't satisfy his appetite, and so Florus made what would prove to be a fateful move for both Judea and Rome. He demanded 17 talents of silver from the Holy Temple's treasury. Some Jews began to mock Florus in the open. They carried a basket about and begged for some copper coins for Florus, as if he were a destitute beggar. This was a terrible blow to the procurator's pride. Florus marched with cavalry and infantry against Jerusalem and commanded its leaders to deliver those who mocked him into his hands. But the Jewish leaders responded that the people were peaceably disposed and begged forgiveness for the offenders. Florus was incensed. He ordered his troops to plunder the upper market of Jerusalem and to slay anyone they met. The soldiers forced themselves into many homes and slew their inhabitants. About 3,600 Jerusalemites were murdered that day. To complete his provocation, Florus sent troops to raid the temple treasury. But the Jews had seen enough. The people blocked the narrow roads leading to the temple, making it impossible for the soldiers to pass. Some stood on the roofs of their homes and threw makeshift weapons at the Romans who were held up on the roads. The Romans had no choice but to retreat. Across the land of Israel, the air was thick with mutiny. But what was the Jewish aspiration of the time? Did the Jews hope to repel a tyrannical Roman governor? Or did they feel the time was ripe to cast off the shackles of Rome once and for all? As subsequent events loudly proclaimed, the Jews of that era could not come to a consensus on this dilemma. A lot of people just assume that the revolt was unanimous. In fact, for a long time before and even during the revolt, Jews were debating whether it was right or wrong to revolt against Rome. 
There was a constant controversy among Jews, dividing families, friends, towns, and it was never resolved really. 